Hi folks, Paul here and today I decided I would come out and start a new series. The series is going to be bushcraft basketry and in it we're going to take a look at all the different ways we can utilise natural materials to make baskets. In today's episode we're going to be looking at one of the simplest baskets we can make, that is the peg basket. Um, aptly named as a result of all the pegs. It's one of the easiest baskets we can make and it's one of the more functional ones as well. You can take the time to make it pretty but for me this is a, a quick easy to make basket it just requires four pegs four cuts and a sheet of bark and um, really useful for storing different tools in different materials and that sort of thing so in today's episode we're going to go over how to select the bark for making one of these we're going to talk about the way we put it together and then lastly we'll go over some of the refining details that we can do to the basket to make it um, something that's pretty as opposed to just functional so thank you for joining me in this new series i hope you enjoy it and uh, let's get stuck in okay so let's quickly talk about the types of bark we're going to use um, in today's episode we're going to be using spruce bark now there's a number of different barks that we can use for basket making and in this series we'll hopefully go over them and, and talk about them each individually but for this episode um, i'm in a spruce plantation here and so spruce is obviously going to be our most um, readily available bark for basket making. We want to find the bark in a, in a particular type of condition. This tree is a tree I've made baskets from in the past. It's a tree that had collapsed due to the wind. Um, the bark was still fresh and I was able to remove the bark while it was fresh and produce baskets from it. That's been some time ago now, that's probably two to three years ago. And since then the tree has dried out, the bark has also dried out and insects and stuff like that have started to burrow inside it as well so um, the bark that was here that was once once very useful for basket making is now full of insect holes it's brittle and uh, the perfect example of what it is we're not looking for So moving on to wood that would be suitable, as a result of all the storms we've had recently, um, a lot of these trees have blown down. Um, they're still very fresh, this was maybe a couple of months ago and the bark is still um, sufficient for our um, goal today to make baskets. And it's quite obvious when you come across a tree that has suitable bark. It tends to have a lot of moisture in it still, um, it's clear of bug holes, it looks just as, as it would just if it was standing up. Um, but the, what I tend to look for is I find a tree that's come down I check to see if the needles are still green that's a good sort of indicator of how long the tree's been down for if it's fairly fresh the needles will still be green and they'll still be quite puffed up um, as the tree's been there for a little while the needles and stuff will start to droop they'll fall off, they'll turn brown and at that point that's kind of a good indicator that the tree's maybe starting to die it's, um, it's drying out Whereas this tree here is probably still actually living in some sense. Um, it'll still be able to, to live off the roots there for a little while longer. And so this tree is very much green. When I cut into it, the cambium is wet, the, the layer underneath this bark is wet, and we'll see that in a wee while. Um, but that's what I tend to look for. I'll give you a close up on how this looks. Okay, and a good test you can do is find an area where the tree is broken and pull the piece off and inspect the bark closely. Now you'll see the bark still has a sort of green tinge to it. It's wet to the touch, that tells me there's still moisture in it. If there's moisture in it, then it's going to be flexible and it should be suitable for what it is we're looking to achieve. If you compare this piece of bark to the one I just broke in our test a minute ago, you can see it's still very malleable. So this just gives you some idea of the types of trees we're looking for when it comes to making baskets. Again, green needles down the bottom there, no insect holes. Spruce trees are very good because they have um, areas of flat, clean bark. Um, the branches are very staggered and you tend to have sort of different layers of branches and in between those layers you have a nice layer like this where it's just clean bark. You can see here, I've pulled off bark from this tree before to make a basket. And now another important thing to note here is that although I have a lot of living trees around me, the trees I'm looking for are the ones that have come down. 
I don't want to go up to a living tree, one that's still standing. There's lots of them around, around where I am at the moment. Um, but if you strip the bark off a living tree and you go all the way around and take off a nice big sheet for basket making, uh, that's what's known as ringing and it's a very, very good way to kill a tree. And to make a basket and kill a tree for that purpose is, uh, is it's not really worth it. It's not, there's not a good payoff there. Um, take the time to explore your local woodland. Um, find trees like this that have come down fairly recently. If you know of plantations, then they're quite good areas to uh, to come along and find these sorts of trees. Um, just be careful in places like that, obviously, but unless it's a real sort of emergency situation, there's no reason for people to go around taking strips of bark off living trees. Find the ones that nature has done the work on already, the ones that have come down. These are naturally going to start decaying and dying, and so you don't need to feel guilty about taking the bark off of these. Um, but if you're to go around and, and kill trees by wringing them and taking bark off standing trees, well then, it's not very good practice at all. Um, and it certainly should leave a bit of a hole in your conscience, I think. Um, but that's enough of that. Let's go and uh, talk about some of the tools we're going to use to uh, remove the bark. Okay, so we've talked about the different types of trees we're going to be using and what it is we want to look out for when it comes to stripping the tree uh, of its bark. There are a couple of tools we're going to need to help us in that. Um, in here I have just a regular folding saw and a full tang knife. It doesn't need to be full tang but it'll certainly help. Just a robust knife. The reason we need those two tools are in order to help us make this one. So this is a bark peeler and um, pretty much essential for getting the bark off in a nice enough piece that we can make a basket from. I'll quickly show you how I make my bark peelers and we'll talk about kind of the uh, the things to take into consideration when you're making one of these and then um, we'll hopefully get to put it to the test. But let's just take a quick look at making a bark peeler. Okay, so a bark peeler is very um, simple to make. As you can see, it's basically just a really thin wedge. Um, nice and long, so you've got a good um, area to hold on to. It's nice and wide as well, and you'll see it has a bit of a curve in it as well. The curve is so that it hugs the tree as you're using it, and that will make sense really well. But the first thing we need is just a nice dead piece of wood. You can use green wood for this, but I find that dead wood, dead wood is much um, better at the task because it's not quite as flexible, it's stiffer, um, and so you're, you're getting more force to where you need it. Um, a thin point like that on a green bit of wood would be very prone to bending and breaking. So this is just a, a bit of dead standing tree that's been lying around here for ages and ages and um, I want about the, the length of my hand. So I'm just going to cut off a piece about that size just now. Okay, so I've cut my piece of wood and uh, it's ready to go. The th first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove all the bark from the outside. Um, the bark is very kind of uh, sharp and you're going to be using this quite a lot so you want it to be nice and smooth on your hands, you don't want to cut yourself, so just remove all the, uh, the bark. Okay, so that's good enough for me. Um, if you're going to be making one of these and you intend to use it quite a lot, then obviously you can take the time to, uh, to do a really nice job of it. But for this demonstration sake, um, rough and ready will do the job. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start cutting in about halfway um, on the piece of wood. So just about here. And what I'm going to start do doing is just flattening off this one side. Now, I expect someone 
will be thinking you could do this with an axe and you're absolutely right but I find using a knife tends to give you this really nice scoop and um, you can see it here on one of my my finished ones as opposed to just using an axe and creating a sort of triangular wedge um, using the knife and sort of scooping the blade tends to give you this nice curve now maybe this is just my imagination or maybe it's real I don't know but I find that having that curve say my um, arm is the uh, tree I find having that car uh, um, curve really helps with guiding the uh, the tip of the uh, bark peeler um, it kind of just fits against the tree nicely and it helps you sort of pry it off whereas a wedge I think would just be too aggressive um, I'll have to do some experiments like I say that's just been my experience so far um, but it takes a little while but I think it's worth doing it this way I think it it really helps with the process so just keeping an eye on it making sure that you're keeping it level it does take a little while this so Okay, so I'm looking to just kind of come about halfway and um, I can see the the heartwood of the, the uh, tree there just in the middle so I'm going to stop just a little bit before that make sure it's nice and flat turn it over and then do the same to the other side Okay, so you can see it's getting quite thin now, um, so I'm just going to start being a little bit more gentle with the amount of material I'm taking off. Okay, so you can see I've got it down to about the thickness that I was looking to achieve. It's probably about the same thickness as the, uh, the back of my knife. But there's an important step here that we need to do and that is rounding off all these hard edges. So on all the sides here there's very hard edges, of course this is still very much a hard edge here. We want to round all of those off because any sharp edges are liable to end up going through the bark. So just take the tip of your knife and go kind of round all these edges at about 45 degrees just to stop them from being quite so aggressive. These corners as well, just sort of chip off those corners. Anything that's sharp, if it if it feels sharp to you, then it's going to be sharp enough to uh, to go through a piece of bark. And then um, the last thing you want is to ruin a nice piece of bark because of a sharp edge that you could have dealt with earlier. So, with that, I think we are ready to. Uh, find ourselves a piece of bark and see if we can remove it. Okay so I found my piece of bark, the piece I'm going to try and um, remove. You can see it's a very nice clean piece, I'm working between two layers of branches here and that's what I would suggest you aim for. Um, you get a nice big open section of bark here, there's no knots or anything that's going to cause me any problems. Um, this is about as perfect a piece of bark as you can find. Another really important thing I find 
Um, it's not essential, but if you can find it, it really helps, is having the tree off the ground. So you can see this tree is off the ground, and that's important because, or it's not important, but it certainly helps because I can remove this bark, and as I'm peeling it round, if this tree was on the ground, I could only kind of go to the bottom here. I'd be missing out on about half the tree, but because it's suspended in the air, and it's solid as well, so I can work on it and it's not going to drop on me or anything. Because it's suspended in the air, I can work the bark all the way around. Um, this will become really important for one of our future baskets where we're making a round um, sort of um, foraging basket. But even for this, it's, it's super important. If you can find it, then make use of it. Because it's not very often you come across it, and when you do, it does make for some beautiful baskets. So I've got my tools here, like I say, my saw my knife and my bark peeler. The um, first tool we're going to use is the knife and we're going to use the knife to mark out the bit of bark that we're going to um, remove. Now, the bigger the bit of bark you can remove, of course the bigger the basket, um, but the, uh, the, more, the more difficult it is. Um, I'm going to aim for probably about this size um, I could take this whole strip, and I probably should in, in reality, but just for today's video um, I'm going to remove just about this section here. The first thing I want to do is I want to make a score the length of the, uh, the piece of bark I want to take off. Now I like to use two hands for this to make sure that I'm really getting a, a nice deep cut into the bark. Um, so make sure you're standing out of the path of the knife, go nice and slowly, um, and don't do anything too dangerous. Just stab the knife in, push down hard, and then pull it back towards you. Um, but again, kind of my my line of cutting lets the knife go past where I am, so I'm not in any danger. So just pull it back, like so. Now that's the length of the piece of bark that I'm going to be taking off. The next thing I need to do is make another line exactly like the one I've just made, but parallel to this one. Um, and you'll see why this is important in a second. Now take your time with this, try and keep it fairly even, it doesn't need to be perfect, but as even as you can get it helps. Okay, so there's my two lines there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect those two lines, like so. And now I'm going to remove this strip of bark here. The reason we're doing this is so that we have clear access to this piece of bark that's in front of it. Um, if you make just one cut here and then you try and put your um, bark remover in there, you're basically going to end up tearing all the edges here and uh, it's just a lot more fiddly, whereas doing it this way allows you a bit of clearance to get your tool in and underneath the bark. So I'm just going to remove this now. I find the easiest way to remove this is just to put your knife in and then sort of twist it up towards yourself. If it doesn't come up all in one go, that's not an issue. Quite often it doesn't. Okay, so I'm just clearing, clearing the entire thing. I don't know if you'll be able to make it out, but there's actually two layers here. There's the white layer, which is the cambium, which is um, the inner, inner bark, if you like. And then there's the actual um, sapwood of the tree underneath that. I'll take you guys in closer so you can see that. Okay, so you've got the cambium here and then you've got the actual sapwood of the tree. What I'm looking to achieve is to get it all the way down to the sapwood. I want it to be this sort of darker yellow stuff all the way along, and that's going to mean that we're right down past all the cambium and we're going to get underneath the cambium layer 
on the sheet of bark we're trying to remove. So that's just what I'm doing at the moment. Okay, so that's that done. The next step is to use our saw and we basically cut the uh, the width of the piece we're going to make. Now we need to saw the edges um, to help guide the bark as it's coming off. If we don't make um, cuts to guide this bark as we try to pull it off what's going to happen is it's just going to shoot around the place and it'll tear at the weakest spots and it'll be very uncontrolled. So what I want to do is use my saw and I'm just going to cut along the edges. I want to keep these nice and straight. Again this is going to basically be an, another edge of my bark. So I've got the the width of it here and I'm just going to use the saw to cut in guidelines. Okay, so we can um, extend these as we go along, just you don't need to go all the way around the tree initially, just enough to uh, to give it some sort of guidance. Okay, so I now have the line I've cut here, where my tool is going to go into and I have two saw lines that kind of extend all the way around the tree. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to use my bark remover here, I'm going to put it in and the hope is that it, the bark itself will follow these two lines and we'll end up with a nice square piece of bark. So to start using the bark remover, what I like to do is get the, the edge of it into the, uh, the bark first and just start working your way underneath it. Now the starting off is always the hardest part and what I'm doing is I'm taking the corner and I'm just sort of gently pushing into it. I'm angling the, the tool sort of downwards um, in the hope that I'll pick up all the bark and it will all come off in nice, one nice piece. Go all the way along. And then once you've done that, you should be able to start getting the whole edge of the, the bark peeler in there now. Now this takes quite a bit of time and effort. Um, once you start getting kind of most of the way around it becomes a little bit easier because the bark is falling away from itself. So um, just go slowly to begin with. And to give you some idea of the force I'm putting into this, you can see I've got my hands cupped around it. My elbows are coming into my waist and I'm sort of thrusting against the tree if you like. I'm sure it looks quite sketchy from someone else's point of view, but I find that to be the most controlled way of uh, removing the bark. Okay, and you can see it's coming up quite nicely now. I don't want to start trying to pull this off. I'm just going to slowly keep using the tool to edge my way into the bark.
okay so I've gotten the bark a good chunk of the way around the tree I've gotten up to the point where I stopped making my saw marks um, to carry on I'm going to want to extend those saw marks further around again just to kind of continue guiding the bark on where I want it to go so if you find you reach your saw marks and the bark starts the edges of the bark starts kind of waving and being unpredictable and you need to take your saw and just ex extend those saw marks Now, I don't really need to go a whole lot further with this, so I'm just going to take off a little bit more. Okay, and now you can see what I mean by the weight of the bark coming off the tree kind of help. Um, help guide it off um, but I think that's probably about big enough that's a beautiful piece of bark I wish they all came off as nicely as that so I'm just trying to make sure it's even make sure it's fairly square um, I can tell that by looking at the cut and seeing how straight this edge is compared to the uh, the angle of the tree so I can see that this edge needs to be a bit further out so I'm going to take off more bark on this side and then from there I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to cut this piece of bark free from the tree Just a simple cut all the way along, oops, all the way along the bottom, joining up those two saw cuts. And now I'll work to that that cut. And there we have it. One beautiful piece of spruce bark ready to be made into hopefully a nice little pot. Um, truth be told it doesn't often happen like this where you get a nice beautiful sheet on your first try and it took me a long time to develop this sort of technique for removing the bark. I couldn't really find anything online about the the best way and so I've been developing it myself and kind of slowly figuring it out and uh, this is what I've found to be the best the best method so you can see it's a beautiful piece of bark no tears no holes flexible so let's go and turn it into a peg pot Okay, so this is one of my old peg pots and uh, we've got the bark now. Of course, the next obvious thing that we're missing are the pegs. So I'm gonna quickly show you over how I make my pegs for my pots and then uh, we'll move on to assembling the, the entire pot. Okay, so again, the spruce tree fulfills our needs here. Um, for my pegs, I, I like to just come up the tree a little bit find these nice straight branches and um, these I find make perfect pegs and I like to take them from um, towards the base up top they're just a bit too thin so I like them to be about the size of my hand maybe just a little bit bigger <laughs> and 
and there you go that's the the basis for one peg so obviously I just need four four of these so I'm going to get three more and then I'll show you how I process them and make them ready to use Okay, so I'm going to show you how I process my pegs. Um, this is just to clean them up a little bit, make them nicer for using. Just to remove the bark, it's quite uh, quite aggressive. And we want to remove anything that's going to be sharp enough to, uh, to tear the bark. We've just spent quite a while removing that bark. And we don't really want to... Uh, to introduce anything sharp to it and, and ruin our, our hard work. Okay, so once I've removed the bark, what I'll do then is split the peg. Um, Just down the middle, again a knife is sufficient for this if it's a, a fairly robust knife. Just using a bit of wood, the same wood we made our um, bark peeler from. And I just want to split it sort of a third of the way down maybe, um, until this is sort of wider than two sheets of bark next to each other. So, not all the way by any means just enough for the bark to be able to uh, to fit down inside just like so okay so that'll do that one and I'm going to do exactly the same thing for all four pegs okay so I've got my four pegs they're rough and ready they're all split and they're uh, ready to go so the last thing we need to do now Just wait for the train to pass. Okay, so the last thing we need to do now is to cut our bark. Now, um, when it comes to making these peg pots, like I say, they're super simple, you can't really go wrong. You only have to make four cuts. I'm going to draw these cuts onto the bark before I make them just to show you guys what they'll look like. But essentially it's just two cuts on one side, two cuts on the other side. So I'll draw them on and then show you. There's no exact measurement, it's just kind of guesswork. Um, if you really wanted to, to make like a super fine pot, I'm sure you could measure all of this and, and figure it out properly. Okay, so there you can see the cuts we're going to make. One's going to come down here, one there, one here, and one here. Now if you look at the peg pots that are already here, you can see what happens is essentially this bit gets folded up into one side, this bit gets folded up into the other side, and because this bit's shorter than this bit, this bit will curl along this edge and then we'll peg it. If you look at this one here, you can kind of get an idea of how that goes. So this bit's going to get curled up, it's going to be longer than this bit, it's going to curl around it, and then we're going to use our pegs and we'll, uh, we'll peg it together. Okay, so let's uh, put it all together. Okay, so I'm going to put my pegs to the side for the time being. I'm going to take my knife and the way I like to do it is I put the tip of my knife at where the cut ends, with the point furthest into the bark, push it in and then chop down. And that should give you a nice clean cut. So we're just going to do that all the way around.
And there we have it, all of our cuts are made. We put the knife to one side now. And now all we need to do is start folding it into the shape of the basket. Now some people will flip the bark over and what they'll do is they'll scrape a line from the end of this cut here to this cut here. And what that does is encourage the bark to fold in that particular spot. Now, it's not something I normally do to be honest, I haven't found it to be all that necessary. Um, but essentially what you do is you would go from, like I say, the edge of one cut to the other and you'd, you'd create a little square in here, essentially the base of your basket. All that does is give you sharper edges, but I find that um, for me, I'd prefer to have the integrity of the bark. The less cutting I can do on the bark, the better for me. Okay, and you can see, we fold this edge up behind this edge, and then here is where we're going to put in our pegs. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. Now when it comes to putting in the pegs, the way I find best to do it is to use your knife to split the peg or open it up um, so that there's room for the bark to go in. Fold your pot together and then place your peg, you can see the end of the peg is open here hopefully. Place that over the bark, start pushing it down and then gently remove the knife and then push your peg down. Now I find that the thing that tends to break most often on these little baskets is the pegs. The pegs are often the weakest point. Um, if anything's going to break it's usually that. But all we have to do now is just go around the corner, all of the corners sorry, and peg these together. Again, just gently remove the knife, push the peg as far down as it will go without breaking. And then do the same to the other side. You can just kind of manipulate the bark into the bend, kind of help it get used to the, the bend it's about to take on. Again, open your peg up. Fold them together. Knife comes out. And you can see the side of the, uh, the pot there. Just push that in. Last one. This is actually a really, really beautiful piece of bark. I'm quite pleased with this one. Peg goes on, remove the knife, push down, and there you have it. One easy peasy peg basket. Okay, so peg basket is finished, it's very it's come out very nice actually, I'm very pleased with it. Um, the piece of bark was beautiful, it happened to come off perfectly symmetrical. Um, as you can see this is still quite rough and ready and there are certain things we could do to make this even prettier. Um, 
for me personally what I would do is I'd clean up these pegs, I'd make them nice. Um, I would, you know, you can carve little things into the end, you could carve like little green men. Um, I think I'm going to try and carve some mushrooms into the end of these ends of these, I think that might look quite cool. Um, of course you can cut them all to the same size and, and nice and neatly as well. Um, the pot itself, you can add little strips of bark in between these two pieces here and you can add a sort of band that goes all the way around it. Um, the possibilities are endless but for right now um, this will probably do me, I'm quite happy with this. One thing I will say is that um, as the bark dries the, um, it will want to kind of roll over on itself and the shape will change quite a lot. So whilst it's fresh like this what I would suggest you do is get pegs or, or sticks and brace the um, brace the pot into the uh, the shape you want it um, just to restrict the amount it can it can move as it dries um, and that will give you the shape you, that, that you uh, that you want um, so I'm going to spend a little bit of time cleaning this up and I'll come back to you um, then just to kind of show you off the uh, the finished product but as a basket goes this is perfectly good ready to use very solid and in fact um, you can actually use these to boil water in as well as store items in um, so a really useful thing to know about um, when it comes to bushcraft containers are one of the most overlooked um, items that we carry uh, and they're not an easy thing to replicate so a simple little pot like this could really save someone's bacon um, you can uh, use it for all sorts so I'm going to spend a bit of time cleaning this up I'll come back to you show you what I've done and then uh, we'll wrap up well folks, there we have it, one completed peg pot. I'm very pleased with how this has turned out actually. Um, my next step is just to make sure that it's framed out for drying and like I say that just involves having sticks to kind of space out the bark so that it doesn't shrink in weird ways. Um, I'll set it somewhere flat so that it doesn't twist as well, it's prone to twisting. Um, but that's about it, I mean you could leave this out in the woods now and start storing stuff in it and you won't have any problems with it at all. Um, again, the people that are kind of skilled at woodworking could carve these into beautiful things and uh, make a really nice job of it, I'm sure. I just removed the bark and rounded the edges and neatened them up a little bit, but uh, and I added this little strip of bark here just as a sort of a, um, decoration. And of course, this can all be marked and drawn on in, in particular ways as well, but. Um, all that's for another video I'm sure but that's going to do it for today's video thank you for taking the time to watch this I really appreciate it and uh, I look forward to covering some more baskets again in the near future of course the main thing when it comes to basket making is choosing something that's worth storing in them so on that thought thank you again and I'll catch up with you soon Okay, so here's what the drying process looks like. As you can see, I've just kind of propped up all the edges using different sizes of stick um, just to stop the edges from folding in on themselves. Um, and the reason I do this is as the pot dries, the bark wants to shrink round and it will want to twist and bend. Um, so by doing this, propping it up in every direction, it should keep roughly that shape as it dries. To give you some idea of what it looks like when you don't do that, you can see here the edges of the bark start to fold over um, and even the ends as well they start to open up so it's well worth taking the time if it's a nice one like this um, little ones like this might not be worth the effort but nice ones like this it's well worth taking the time just to prop them all up and allowing them to dry properly and keep their shape that way so